I'm just so excited. I can't believe this is ours. Welcome back to our channel. This vlog is very exciting. Um, it's going to be about our process of buying a house. I thought I would start it now right at the beginning of the process. I've now just contacted some banks and we're in the beginning stages of restructuring our finances for a mortgage. Last week, Kate and I um, reached out to the Bank of Ireland. We'll have a discussion with the mortgage advisor and see what we need to start doing in order to make sure that we can get approval for a mortgage. I'll keep you updated on that meeting. I think it went very well. Yeah. Yeah, it went very, very well. Kind of reiterated, reiterated what we already knew about getting a mortgage and the housing market. Shared new details with us that we didn't know. But I think some of the brief, like a brief summary, the first thing is that a, a limit of a mortgage of three and a half times your combined gross salary. A couple of months later, the central bank announced that it would be changing this rule from three and a half times your gross salary to four times your gross salary for first time buyers, which was very exciting for us and I'm sure just as exciting for any first time buyer in Ireland. There are exceptions to that rule. We want to set up for in order to be one of the exceptions. So to get a mortgage that's greater than three and a half times our salary. It opens up your search a little bit. There's not a lot of houses in Ireland at all. And there especially aren't a lot of houses in Ireland that are below a certain threshold. It seems to think based off of how much money we've, we're putting away and how much money we're paying in rent, we are eligible for an exception. Mortgages in Ireland, they there's no credit here. So rather than build up a credit score like you would in South Africa, um, it's all based on your saving and spending habits. So they look at your last six months, how much do you save a month? Um, rent in is included as a saving. Mm. You're putting money away and saving it and then withdrawing from that savings. Um, it's a bit of a negative, but if that's only happening every once in a while, it doesn't bother too yeah, much. Yeah, and I think um, the key thing with that that he was saying is that as long as it's been replenished, like I think as yeah. long as they can see a consistent increase in your savings. Yeah. And then the third big thing that I didn't really know that much about that he shared insight with us today was um, I'm starting a new job at the end of this month and effectively there's a probation period while we can get a mortgage in principle a mortgage approval in principle we will not actually get the physical mortgage until my probation period is ended it kind of delays us buying a house by another six months so it's May now realistically if all things go according to plan November um, there's a whole lineup of open viewings currently going on in Dublin 18 this morning. I'm going to look at what they have to offer and then at the end of the viewing, he's going to tell me how much he thinks that this house is worth. When I drove up, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be 480 was the number. With the number and yeah. it was 485. 485, What's but that? I think I would have kept 480 after seeing the inside of the house. Big, um, would need a bit of work. Yeah, I it's. I think it does need a little bit of work. So this one is the only one that I know. It's been on the market since April. Um, that's why I took my chance and I asked the lady would they be willing to rent until we could buy it. Mm, I don't know. It's, it's nice as three bedrooms, but I don't like that it's, it's the way it's split. It's a bit of a weird one for me. If you have a bedroom, living area, bedroom. I, I think a lot of work. That would be the only thing. Yeah. The All three bathrooms I'd redo. I'd renovate. The kitchen wasn't that great. And the cornices. It, it, it looks like it was um, a home renovation that someone had done. Yeah. No, you're right. I think it does need renovation. But I think it's good a value good, for money. good value for money. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Let's very go. Nice we've got. This is very nice. I think we're looking for more of a home. Yeah, but if we're going to, have to concede, kids in the garden. but if we're going to concede on that, it's the kind of place that we would that we would do it for. Yeah. Big views. Big. 
apartment. In terms of value for money, the yeah, other first place was apartment better. we saw. Yeah. What's well, 30 grand cheaper? This one would need less work. This would need more decorational work. Oh, it was very nice. And I think it would definitely be a contender if there was any way that we could reconfigure it into a three bedroom apartment. But there's yeah. just no way you could do that. So, 5 for 510, asking price, it's 110 square meters. So just looking at the architecture and the style from the outside, this house looks very 90s. Yeah. But thought it was 48, like 480. Yeah, initially. Initially, and then when I went inside, I saw they've obviously renovated, everything's modern and new. So the only two problems were the laundry was in the shed outside, which as Bianca points out in winter, that would be... That's not... That oh, suck. if it's raining. And the second one is... The en suite. Bathroom doesn't have a toilet. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was just their furniture, but it feels like a, maybe after being at the other places, it feels like a very claustrophobic house. I'd say that, that it's not more than 100 square meters, which is very small for a three bedroom family home. Currently on the market for 500,000 euros, which actually when you think about it is a lot of money. In a really nice close proximity to the Lewis line, which is why I think it's quite a popular, why there were so many people. I think it will go for a lot more than 500. People are waiting outside, it's actually crazy. That's all the people waiting outside. Okay, so that's all the houses. We had to put an offer on any house that we've seen today. Which one would it be? Assuming we get it, assuming the we get it, listed for, yeah, the third one. So, the 500,000 house, house, semi detached house. Semi -detached house. So, yeah, which one would you do? Just go on. Just say, the first just... one. On our way to Kiel, which is in Kildare, about 30 kilometers from Dublin, we are going to go and look at an estate that has an open view in there today that is um, very well priced. Open up our, what's the word, open up ourselves a bit more to other areas. I've never, we've never been to Kiel, all nice. One of the biggest barriers to entry to buying a house is having your 10% deposit. So we had decided we were gonna do a little bit of research on developments that are Help to Buy approved. Help to Buy is a scheme that's available if you're buying a new build property that is less than 500,000 euros. And lastly, you need to be a first time buyer. If you meet the criteria, the government will then give you your 10% deposit um, as a refund of the taxes you've paid to date, but the limit on that is 30,000 euros. Um, so this is a help to buy approved development that we had decided to go and look at. It is honestly, it was such a stunning development. Three bedrooms are starting from 410,000 euros. Unfortunately, the three bedroom properties were sale agreed and there were only four bedrooms that weren't helped buy approved. The elephant in the room around the deposits. When we moved over, we didn't know if we were going to stay, but we knew that we were saving money and that one of our goals was to buy property wherever we had decided to be in the medium to long term. So we've been saving since we moved and we brought over some savings with the property prices in Ireland and the 10% deposit requirements. It was a huge ask to have a full deposit. And so we effectively had two options with our deposit. The first option was a help to buy scheme, which meant that we would get 30,000 euros from the government and then we would just pay the difference. So for example, that property, it was 410,000 euros for a three bedroom. So we would get 30,000 from the government and then we would need to make up the difference of 11,000 euros. Fortunately for us, and I honestly cannot I cannot stress how incredibly grateful I am that we are in this situation. And I think being open and honest about it is very important to me. We are in a position where we could get help with the deposit. I don't know why I feel so like nervous saying that. I don't want to be judged for getting help, but um, I also don't want to create this, un this unrealistic expectation 
that we moved here and we had our 10% deposit in less than two years of living here. The reality is that if we wanted to buy a house without any help from the government or without any help from our parents, it would take us around four years to buy. I am very, very grateful and I realize how incredibly lucky we are. I really, really do. Um, even if we didn't have help, I think we would have gone down the route of like committing to help to buy um, because I think it's an incredible scheme. The only problem with the scheme is that it feels like there aren't enough houses that meet the requirements. Because while we've been looking at properties at Hockley, we've kind of been waiting out my uh, probation period, which means we haven't really made any progress outside of doing research and figuring out what areas to buy, new build, second hand, help to buy. But today is maybe a more significant milestone in our journey. Bank of Ireland had said that they'd put us in contact with a mortgage uh, broker and ultimately we didn't push or get the documents over to Bank of Ireland and they haven't come back to us to ask for more information to the point where we've asked for advice and most people have said don't go directly with the bank go with a mortgage broker so that's what we're currently doing busy submitting all of our documents I had a call I asked her a whole bunch of questions and I took notes <laughs> asked her about you know probation period and essentially what she said is we can start to get pre-approval. She believes that if we find a house in my probation period, we can still probably close on it outside of my probation period. So it's very exciting because it means that like the waiting period is done and now we can actually start to do something. The one thing she did mention that I didn't even think about because we're coming from South Africa, she suggested that we get the process started of obtaining a credit report she said she thinks it might take a while so we should start the process now just in case the banks ask for it a little bit of admin in south africa to sort out so i'm <laughs> that's the thing that i'm the most nervous about but i'm sure it will be fine we've been looking at houses new builds all over we went to a look at new builds in elgany leakslip kill cherrywood looking at secondhand properties which will be closer to where we currently stay. Houses that we see from this point onwards could really be our future house. Really nice area. Nice Driving area. in, it was like a proper yeah. suburb right next to the Lewis. Yes. I could easily see myself in that property. The only thing is it doesn't have an ensuite bathroom. The house itself is very small, but the plot is quite big. It's on the market for 535 and the agent told us that there is an offer for 515. So it's also quite old. Like the radiator though. I would rip all that stuff up. Relay some pipe. <laughs> I had mixed thoughts, um, but really nice. So there's a lot of little nooks and crannies and it makes it, the house has a lot of character, but it does make it very um, difficult to host. And I think that would be pretty sad not having a house that's capable of hosting people. Good price as well. It's it was really a really good, good price. price. And it could be a walkway to the Lewis line. Yeah. But like it's also quite a good location. Uh, very cute, very cute, good price. Uh, that was the one that I was the most excited to see. On to the next one. My favorite so far. It is a duplex, so it's not like a standalone house, but when you're inside the house, it does not feel like there's someone living above you. Bigger than all the other houses it's I've seen. It's really the big. The thing is there's someone above you, but you still got a garden, you still got two stories. Yeah. Like we could see our furniture there. Yeah. There's was... a nice, big bathroom downstairs, there's a big bathroom upstairs, and there's a fairly large ensuite. I wouldn't be upset if we bought that house. I wouldn't be either. The agent seems to think that the property will go pretty soon, and in order to make an offer, you need approval in principle. We've submitted our application for approval in principle to the bank, but um, only time will tell. It's a bit of a sad day in the home buying journey for the Clutie family. Last thing I actually want to be doing is filming and speaking about it, but number one, 
I think for me and how I feel in this particular moment will be very interesting to look back on. And number two, I think talking about it might also help me. We submitted an application to the Bank of Ireland and the AVAC money for an approval in principle. Um, and we did this through a broker. Anyway, a number of complications within our application, I kind of disclosed upfront to the broker before we submitted the application. We were only in Ireland for a year and at that point a year and four months. I had an outstanding credit amount from Celsi. For those of you who don't know Celsi, if you're not South African, Celsi is a, a company based in South Africa, a telecommunications company. And uh, before I left South Africa, I had a contract with them. The crux of the matter is I pulled my credit report from South Africa and it came up that I owed Celsi. Um, and I think instead of fighting it, I had taken the view that I was just going to pay it, settle it, get it off my credit report. I worked out about 200 euros that I owed them. I told the broker this and she was of the opinion that like it was very explainable and um, that it wasn't a lot of money and we could still go ahead with the application. In the background, I've been trying to follow up with Celsi to get this matter resolved. I finally managed to get in contact with them and made a test payment just to make sure that the payment went through. So I didn't pay the full amount. I just paid about maybe 50 euros of the 200 euros and I got nowhere. They hadn't allocated that payment correctly. It just has been so slow. Like I just don't know what's happening with that payment. Anyway, prepared a memo and explained the scenario in detail. There's been lots of back, backs and forths with the banks, the two banks that we submitted an application with. And yesterday we got a notification to let us know that our request with AVAT money has been declined. And the reason why it's been declined is, number one, we haven't been in Ireland long enough. So it is actually an issue that we haven't been living in Ireland for that long. It's only been a year and six months at this point. Number two was this outstanding amount from Celsi. And number three, we are relying on a gift in order to help us get the deposit. I didn't expect them to outright decline. I thought at least with some of these issues, they would give us lower than what we were asking for. When I saw the notification, it's not like I was surprised because obviously there'd been lots of questions and issues coming up. But the more and more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't understand. Bank of Ireland have also come back and said like they want a 20% deposit because we haven't been living here for two years. Is the passage of time an additional six months really going to change the risk profile that we have for a mortgage? Is it Facebook group called Mortgage Advice Ireland and get a sense of, you know, is this issue specific to these two banks? What are other people's experiences? Because surely there is an expat who's been living here for less than two years who has been able to get a loan with a bank with a deposit of 10%. And which bank did they go with? Huge, huge believer that everything happens for a reason. Sitting here today feeling very sad and like very frustrated about the outcome. I believe with my whole heart that it's happened for a reason. And that reason will be revealed to me at some point in time. <laughs> And I will look back at this particular moment and be like, okay, well, this is exactly why this happened. Now it's just about being patient for that day to come. Exciting but nerve wracking because any of these houses we're now in a position to make an offer and that commitment's actually giving me a little bit of a I fear. think you're gonna like this house a lot. The moment I walked into the house I was like this is the one. I absolutely fell in love with the house, everything. I loved that it had an ensuite which is pretty rare for Dublin believe it or not the cupboard space was good not what i'm used to but good the family bathroom was really well sized it had three bedrooms upstairs 
and then downstairs it had an open plan living dining which again was one of the big things on my list it also had a downstairs bathroom for guests it had a utility closet which you don't see in this video um, the kitchen was also really nice fairly modern um, lots of storage and counter space it had a garden um, the garden was a generous size easy to maintain this is the middle of winter and you can see it's getting so much sunlight um, in the house and even in the garden and you can even see Kay trying to sell me on the house by how the sun sets and rises we walked out and i was like we need to make an offer it is such a big day in our home buying journey oh. yeah today the offer is going to the agent we are putting in an offer below asking the house is definitely worth the asking price um so i feel a little bit cheeky putting in an offer below asking i feel like i have this out of body experience where like i just don't feel like we're adult enough to be making bids and obviously the estate agent knows a lot more than us and we're so inexperienced and it's the house that we're first bidding on and i feel so embarrassed that we are so inexperienced we have to make our first offer at some point the likelihood of this being the house that we buy is very low so our offer went into the estate agent but unfortunately he could not accept the offer usually when you make the offer you send the offer in with your approval and principal and the advice that i had seen was that you redact how much you've been approved for so that the agent doesn't know what you can bid because if they know they might push you to use up your max budget send that through and he came back and said, well, I need to see how much you can, you're approved for. You could be approved for a lot less. I understand his logic, but it, was, it went against all of the advice I had read about sharing your approval and principal number with the agents. So in the background, I was trying to see if I could get a letter from the bank to say that we're good for this money. And while we were waiting for that to come through, there was bidding going on and essentially the house went sale agreed in that period of time that we were waiting and so it just wasn't meant to be for us and I'm just so excited because you can see the ocean from this development and it's making me so happy we are currently on our way to the solicitors to sign contracts I feel like it's a bigger commitment than marriage was you have 21 minutes to change your mind now we have to go into the solicitor's office um, to sign and then yeah and then off to work like it's a casual day yeah then buying a house then straight to work afterwards that will be interesting when you buy a new build you sign contracts you pay over your 10 percent 20 percent whatever deposit that you have and then you just wait you wait until the builder says you are good to go your house is ready when your house is ready they send you a note to say your house is ready for snagging he has the date and the time and once you have your first snag you typically have about three weeks to close um now i have heard that this does take longer than three weeks i think it all depends on the flow of information, how quick your broker is, how quick your solicitor is, you know, is there any missing information? It's just, yeah, a very admin intensive process. Our developer has been promising a snagging date for weeks now, and we've been on to them, like, when are we snagging? When are we snagging? The first was meant to be the 2nd of November, then it was changed to the 10th of November, then it was changed to the 17th of November, and now it's finally the 22nd of November. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a process to get here. 
um, we've hired a snagger. The snagger is going to go look, identify any issues with the house. And um, assuming there are no material issues with the house, like water, electricity, plumbing, and, you know, all of the main things are working well, we will aim to draw down within two weeks from snag date. It's a very ambitious timeline, but I'm so motivated to get into our house before Christmas. So I'm like trying to get everything sorted before then. Getting the solicitor, broker, mortgage protection, home insurance. It's just, yeah, so much admin. Ugh. But we're almost there. We're almost there. Snagging date today. It's the first time we're going to see our house. We've only ever seen it from like the bottom of a hill looking up. Every time we go look at our house, we stand at the bottom of the hill and we look up and there's this tree. So we could actually never really see our house. And I said to Kate, oh no, this tree is going to block our views. And he was like, no, don't worry. The house will be bigger than the tree. And I was like, that tree is pretty big. The house because will not. smoking crack. Yeah, smoke, he was smoking something because there's no way that that tree is smaller than our house. It is a huge tree. Anyway, yeah. they will see who wins the bet. And it will most likely be me. In the months leading up to us moving, I have used every resource at my disposal to prepare a drawing, drawings of our house based off of accurate measurements. Mm. So I'm very excited because what I've done is I've printed it out and then I've put my measurements. And then when we actually go measure today, <laughs> what I also did is a lot of this is furniture we've shipped and I kind of knew the measurements. So I've like, um, like for example, here, yeah, this is the couch that we've shipped. Quick detour before we go to our snagging appointment. We're on our way to the bank. Enacted our mortgage protection policy and so now we need to go to the bank in order to sign a piece of paper. Extremely excited to see our house. I'm excited to be around to the tree. So cute, we got a little bottle of champagne from EBS. Honestly, I cannot recommend EBS enough. Yeah, yeah. Daniel was a superstar. Yeah, Daniel at EBS Standrum. Cannot recommend him enough. I cannot believe we're in our house. I can't believe this is our house. Goodbye for now, house. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time.